you you have two options play the play the the big team role or be successful sure. and my dad my dad told me you want to play you want to cry you want you don't want to fix anything about that you don't want to you don't want to fix your problem playing the big team role but you are in the most powerful country in the world that you can dictate your destiny that's what my father said and if you, if you want to succeed you need to go out and work because no that's how we we are this is how you become like a real man a real woman when you start succeeding and you become independent of anyone working hard doing your you your thing uh, uh, because in that kind of regime nobody nobody own nothing hey guys welcome back to be not afraid a podcast that lists the dissident voices those that say no and take a stand against the current place that we find ourselves in today Today, my guest is Carlos Moreno. Carlos is a recent immigrant to America from Venezuela, and we dig into his story. We dig into what Venezuela was like before their cultural revolution and what it looks like today. So I hope you'll enjoy this conversation with this very powerful and strong, courageous person. Thank you. So Carlos, I just want to hear your story. Like, What brought you to America? Uh, I came here to the United States in 2009, December 2009, as an international student. Um, during that time, uh, I was studying the Venezuelan regime, socialist regime, start uh, doing a lot of bad things. For example, in 2008, before I came to the United States, they uh, passed a bill in the Venezuelan Congress where they... Uh, take the guns from everybody, even, even private companies. With that in place, uh, the revolution became more and more radical, radical, um, and they started doing a lot of bad things. And during my time, in the, I was studying law. law. Uh, uh, I, be, I graduated in the last school in Venezuela, um, and all the professors in the last school were telling us, like, you need to leave. If you if you can if you can if you can go to other country, you need to leave. Meanwhile, we know what what's gonna happen in the country, because like I said, Chavez. Another thing that Chavez, the dictator, did is was a uh, he uh, increased the number of justices in the Supreme Court, um, and was very <clears throat> that was very dramatic uh, and also really bad for our uh, judicial system. Uh, because we don't have any more uh, an independent, uh, uh, you know, an independent judicial system in Venezuela. Be because that reason, I talked to my dad. I said, "Hey, dad, you know, my dad was a my dad was a businessman and also a politician in Venezuela." And I talked to him and say, "Hey, this is happening." He was very educated and informed about what happened in Venezuela. And I tell I told to him like, hey, you, we need to. I I I would like to explore options, uh, uh to start in other country. And meanwhile, we know what's going on. That year in two thousand nine, uh, I graduated in the last school, I got married, and I traveled to the United States. Uh, and let me let me to make the to make the long story short. Um. I don't want the I don't want the short story. My, my goal is always to try to create content that if the the high schooler who thinks that socialism or a cultural revolution is a good idea, right now there's a lot of young people who are, have their fist up in the air and their cultural revolution is beautiful, and I, I just want them to know the truth of. It's very sad. Um... Uh, to be honest, uh, I, when I when I see these images and, and this in the news, and I want to cry because this country is beautiful. The system is beautiful. The constitution is a miracle. Imagine Venezuela in in the history of Venezuela. I am a Venezuelan lawyer. Uh, we have more than twenty seven constitutions in the history of Venezuela, and five different republics. And uh, it's, it's, it's incredible, it's a miracle that the United States have just one constitution in the history who guide people 200 years ago from us in the past and is guiding people like our our generation, our society. It's a miracle. And people, I, I'm, I'm very, 
I I I cannot uh, I cannot express with my with words um, how how the gratitude that I feel to have this constitution and have the United States in my life uh, as a political as I lead, I have seen a lot of vaccines in, in that kind of in, in that kind of system. Uh, for example, when I was in the last school, uh, the the regime in one year execute three hundred people in the streets. They they was they was a uh, peaceful uh, <clears throat> they were peaceful uh, protesters. Of, yeah, protesters, but peaceful. No, no, like what we see right now, peaceful. Uh, and they killed three hundred people. I can show you videos and videos and videos of college students uh, assassinated, but uh, peacefully manifesting the right, their right, their views, um, and they just kill it with the army. Can, um, can you describe to me what what peaceful means today? Um, and, yeah, and let, let, let me explain you what what we did in Venezuela. We did forums. Uh, we we started educating people in the universities. And also, uh, we uh, we made a uh, arrangement with with different cities to march uh, in, in in from here from here, you know, and the college student will uh, white shirts, and also we we paint our hands in white, and we we make this in in as a symbol of, of peace, you know, wow. um, but everything was under the law, everything was. With the permission, everything was co correct. What well, what happened is the Venezuelan regime create a uh, uh, organizations, uh, different kind of organization like what I see right now here in the United States. Uh, they came to our manifestations with violence, and we we try to sabotage what we what we did, and that kind of that kind of manifestation with weapons and violence. You know, everybody has to go, and, and, and everybody need to need to go into the safe place. And this is this is become more and more and more violent, more and more radical. When this group of this group for, from the government came to our uh, our manifestation to try to uh, to stop our 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 peaceful um, uh, way to to manifest. And what were you guys protesting? What, what was going on in your country? Like, I they hide so much in America. Most things are hidden. We might see a little glimpse on the news here or there, but we don't really see why the protests happened in the first place. Oh, the changes, the changes for in the constitution. Chavez started changing the constitution. Constitution. Chavez started increasing the number of justices in the Supreme Court, uh, taking away the weapon from the people. Uh, it's a, a lot of changes. For example, they. They did something very similar to what I see right now. Right now, we call this ESG, but in Venezuela, they implement this in Venezuela uh, 15 years ago. Um, it tried to control to control the economy. Um, to, to be honest, you you have your money, and you need uh, if you want to transfer your money to other uh, bank institution in other country or whatever you want to do or exchange your 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 currency to other cur or currency, you need to request a permission to the government, and the government will tell you how much and when and how you're gonna transfer that money. Um, everything was more and more radical, and that's why people was in the in the industry the we are against all these all these crazy policies and trying to control the economy and try to control our life because when you control the economy, you control the life of the people. Right. Yeah, we're hearing a lot of things about how they want to know down to the very, down to 10 cents, how every dollar is spent. Everything what happening right now in America is like Venezuela in, two, in, in the in the in 2000s. Um, is, is, for some people, this is very, oh he's, oh, he's coming to tell me about Venezuela, and this happened already in Venezuela, but what can I tell you? Is it what happening right now? And people don't believe me, and and more, uh, and the most dangerous thing about this is like some politicians are, are, are skeptical here in that with that kind of ideology, they don't have principles, they don't have values, moral yes. values. The only the only thing that they want to want to do is is put in effect their, their political agenda, 
the, these, these people, with these people, you cannot have a conversation. They don't want to have a conversation. They want mandate. They want to, to do what they want to do. And, and people don't believe me. And, and it's, it's very frustrating when you try to talk a politician in America and they sube, underestimate, in Spanish is subestimar, underestimate how evil is these people. And they want to change, the, for example, because this is happening right now, Chavez changed the, 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 school, the, the school curriculum and they start, they start teaching about Karl Marx, Marx uh, Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, and all these, these uh, losers from the history, because they are losers, uh, these losers from the, from the history, to try to, to, try to teach the, their, their teachings to us. And also, they start, they start putting a lot of Marxist uh, uh, concepts in the, in the Venezuelan curriculum. And I'm, 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 to, I'm talking about that, that started like 16, 17 years ago in Venezuela. Um, what I see right now is, is the change in the curriculum here. Of course, it's different because it's customized to the to, to this society. But what they want to do is control the, the education. That's why I'm here. What happened with me to, uh, uh, to, 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 to come back to my story? I was an international student. Uh, they, they implement this. Uh, controlling the economy, I need to request permission to the government to uh, to bring my own money to this country to pay my tuition, expenses, and everything. One semester was fine, but the next semester, they denied this right to more than 25,000 Venezuelan students abroad. Imagine 25,000 Venezuelan students abroad in America, in, in French, in Spain, everywhere in, around the world, without money, uh, with no money to pay their tuitions and all. And they, people start losing visa, people start lose, uh, people became homeless. Imagine a college student abroad became homeless. And I, because this did happen, I started an organization called Venezuelan Students Abroad, and we start denouncing this situation uh, from the Venezuelan regime, uh, what, what the Venezuelan regime did to us. And I went to the, the United Nations, the Organization for American State, the, the United States Congress, the, the United States Senate, uh, the European Parliament. Uh, we went everywhere to denounce this situation. When they identified me as the leader of this organization, one day I wake up. Uh, I, I, was in, I, 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 I was in Washington DC in the moment uh, in a trip uh, in, the, in the Organization for American State. And I decided that night to turn off my phone because I was so tired talking to many journalists and many people. Um, and that day, that, that day I, in the, the next day I wake up, I turn on my phone and I got more than 1,000 text messages from family, from people in Venezuela. And these text messages to Carlos, you are in trouble, Carlos, what happened with you, Carlos? Are you okay? Like, so what, 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 what is happening here? When I took my to my phone, they sent me a video, the, the Venezuelan Congress president in national TV, in TV, charged me treason and conspiracy. Be between 18 and 30 years in jail if I come back to Venezuela. In that moment, I said, okay, and this is real. Okay, I, I cannot come back to Venezuela. I'm here with, as a, with an international student visa. What can I do? That's why I decided to apply for political asylum. Uh, uh, and that was another miracle for me because in four months, my political asylum was granted. Um, and it's a process who can take eight, five, 10 years, 12 years of waiting uh, for the federal government. But I was lucky or, or I, I was blessed uh, to, to have this process in four months. Can you explain to me, so how, how does the takeover happen? Like when you were a child, what was Venezuela like? Oh, wow. Um, um, was was one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Uh, Christmas, 
uh, because for 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 Venezuela, for people in Latin America, Christmas is big. Uh, it is it, pretty similar, but in the same time, pretty different to America. Um, family, people was wealthy. Uh, Venezuela was in a really good position. Uh, we travel all over the all over the world uh, for vacations. Venezuela was a wealthy society, and every every five five of ten Venezuelans have college degrees. That that that's a, that I wanna that's a measure or that's a that's uh that's a fact that show you what kind of society I was born. People is educated. Venezuela, you can see Venezuela driving Ubers because we have eight million uh, uh, refugees around the world. Is the is the largest refugee. Uh, crisis in the history of the world. Uh, Eight million people, individual people, uh, seeking political asylum, seeking a place to to live, um, after being a wealthy country, and that that the society that I am forty, and I my half of my life was uh, I lived in a demo, in a democratic uh, republic, and the other half half of my life. I had I have I have been dealing with socialists. This is what I'm interested in about with what's happening in America. How do people agree with this? How do people go, oh, okay, I'm gonna give up my, you know, upper middle class or wealthy lifestyle um for Marxism? It's a co- it's a combination, it's a combination of many things. Like uh uh for example, um they they work the the Sikhis, uh, I don't know if the Sikhis is a word in English, but they were the mentality of the of some people. For example, in Venezuela was the poor class, and Chavez started uh, um, offering um, free things. Oh, you're gonna get you're gonna get free blah. You're gonna get free this. Uh, like these, welfare. These welfare. people is taking your money. This this rich, the one percent of this country is rich. And they they control they the same speech. Uh, they control all these things, and I'm gonna di- redistribute this uh, wealthy wealth, wealthy uh, to you because that's belong to the to the people that belong to the to the country, you know, to the people. And and the the, the that's a that's a, that was the hoop. The they, poor people. They thought hoop. that they would have a redistribution, and then they would all be able to be equal. Equity was equity a word that they use? Oh yeah, <laughs> all day, every day. <laughs> and the, and I remember, I remember that the, that was every day. This speech in universities, most in universities, and most most in the low income low income neighborhood. Like a, they did a really good grassroots work. You can know I, that's something impressive to be honest. How this individual go to the grassroots? They work in the grassroots. And that's something that Venezuelan politicians were lazy in the moment because we we were a, a rich country, and um, and I see this in Utah. Many politicians are, you know, they don't care. They don't visit the communities. They just they, if you of course if you go to them, they are nice. They can help you, but they don't look for 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 help. They don't because when you are a politician, you need to be a a preach of the of the truth. Like Ronald Reagan and the other good politicians, you always are preaching your principles and the principle of the country, the constitution, you know, the, all these things. But uh, when you don't have anyone preaching the truth, it's easy for the evil preach the evilness. When the, the when these politicians try to try to to do the grassroots or try to 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 show empathy. With the people, the people say, "Oh, we have Chavez. Chavez, in 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 his first campaign, he he was talking to us. He he cared about us because he gonna redistribute all the things that you you know, and and it is is incredible because, um, also this kind of system use bad feelings, use people frustration, use people, uh, angry when people is resentment." Angry. They, they they use all these things against good values because right. you, they are trying to they are trying to find a common enemy. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, you are poor because then you are you are this because then you are black because they know 
if I poor, if if I am poor, if I am if for me, if not for anyone else, I need to go out and work because that that's the most amazing thing about America that you can do you can you can dictate your destiny. I'm, I'm an immigrant. I'm, a, I'm an immigrant, I, and I feel in my in my 13 years in America, very very blessed, and also and also I have a, a a, a deep gratitude about the person who I I became when I came to America with nothing. Like I was you know money when when the when the regime did all this crazy thing. Right. And now I am rich but I'm growing fast. <laughs> I do my best, you know. I can I can see progress in my life. So in Venezuela before Chavez was it like America in that if you were poor but you worked hard, you could achieve, or was it more of a caste system? And if you were born poor, there was very little chance of changing your outcome. No, 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 of course no. Like a Venezuela always was a was a a, a country with opportunities. Uh, of course, it's not like America. Uh, we was growing uh, and we were developing our economy. But our economy was the most uh, uh, strong economy in Latin America. Remember that Venezuela has uh, the one is number one in in oil re in oil reserve in the world. And right. uh, our our economy is based in, in 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 oil and also in other stuff. Venezuela is rich in many ways, uh, minerals. Uh, we have uh, agriculture, a strong ag agriculture, but. The other, the other thing that they did, and that's what I see right now, is like a, they start destroying the middle class. Venezuela have a strong middle class. And you, you start seeing crazy political eco economic uh, policies to destroy the middle class. Because what they want to do is get everyone became poor. Because when you have a strong middle class, you can you can make you can make whatever you want with the strong middle class because they can they this this individual can think about this, this individual can think about you know policy about make make, poli make political decisions and all this stuff. But uh, when you when you destroy the middle class, you don't have any more. Um, you don't have uh, you don't have an independent uh, society to make correct political decisions. For example. Um, in less than two years, what do you think about the, Ameri the American economy? Is 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 America strongest the two years ago? No. The economy, everybody's suffering, right. and, and I see I see so many people losing their jobs, and nobody's talking about this. Right. So thinking in the moment in Venezuela, or thinking in, in Venezuela, like why they are doing so many stupid things over and over and over like they have we have really not, uh, smart people to take to take over the economy what they, what what happening what why they are doing mistake and mistake because it was a plan it was a plan and people people had no belief in the moment that these people is so evil that they want to destroy the economy to became to to all became a slave of the system so how about religion? Was religion pretty big in Venezuela? I'm assuming it was. Uh, of course, yes, yes. We yes. we we have a we have a 90, 98 percent Catholic in Venezuela. Yes. Um, um, and to um, let's let's go in in the cultural way. Uh, Venezuela, Venezuela, and Latin American countries uh, believe in God. Uh, is no is no is is something that you 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 don't have any doubt. Right. I don't know, like, like for us, it's in our DNA. Like, belief in God is something that is in our culture. The respect of, of you know, believing in Jesus Christ, believing in God, like, is is strong in our in our community. If, if you want to, if you want to convince somebody that the God don't exist, Venezuelans and maybe Latin American people are gonna tell you like, you are wrong, and leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but in other kind of society, maybe the, like I said. Marxists maybe can take uh, this path to confuse the population, but for some for some uh, communities that doesn't work. In Venezuela, they try, 
they try to implement a Cuban noir religion, something something like a cult. Yeah. And they try to implement this in the poor class. And also they they bring uh people from Middle East, like a uh, uh to Muslim. Muslim. Uh-huh. But never, never that have a real a real impact in our communities. I've I've talked to quite a few people who are uh dissidents or refugees, and they say that in school they're taught that religion is old fashioned. Um so that never that never hit in your schools where they teach that religion is old fashioned, that your parents have old old ideas, old customs need to be rejected. No, because the way the way that they did it was be, was in the in the fight between between uh, class, for example, uh, about poor and rich. That mm -hmm. that in that kind of speech, that kind of uh, ideology, is more uh, accepted uh, or, or is more is more op it, it work for them in that kind of communities. Uh, when you try to use free, because. For example, for Latinos and other, I see this in another minority community in the United States, belief in your family is essential for you. Um, for example, you don't, you don't put in that, we have a lot of respect for our elders and for our people that you don't put in, it's is really hard try to convince somebody somebody to, uh, to don't believe in their parents or, or hate their families. Mm -hmm. um, and that's is is it's not that easy for them, but it's easy to use that fight between poor class and middle class and uh, in that kind of society. I'm talking about Latin America, right? Because the difference is very is very visual, right? It's like mm -hmm. the the yeah. very very poor people have very little, and the very wealthy are very comfortable. Yes, exactly, exactly. So. So what did it look like? Was it an overnight situation with in terms of when they came to collect the guns? Was that was that overnight? Was that just um Chavez just said collect them? Well, I don't know what was Chavez in charge of the regime? Yeah, in that moment in 2008 when I was there uh, and yeah. Chavez was Chavez was the president, the president um of Venezuela and they start changing everything legally. Uh, they start doing bills. They start uh, changing the society in a legal way uh, to implement or to force uh, people to to give the right. For example, with the gun thing, uh, even people who have private companies for safety, they need to give their guns. Um, and that was stupid because people start telling, okay, why I need to pay somebody to take care about my my building? This person is don't have any weapon. What is this person gonna do? They would. The bad people are gonna kill this person, like, and that was another crisis because when they did this, they start ra ra the radicalization started in Venezuela. They start implementing more and more socialist things because when you when you take a, when you take the weapon from the people, how are you gonna defend yourself? You you start uh, when when that happened. I remember, I start I start seeing in the news, um, they start using our own weapons against us. Uh, like I said, they create groups. Uh, like what I see right now, I can tell you right ha right now, right here, BLM, Antifa, and all these crazies uh, with weapons. Right. And and the, and Chavez uh, always said like, oh, they they are part of the revolution. They are defending the democracy. They are defending the poor people, and they start killing people. That's like uh -huh. the uh, recently in Washington D.C. Um, there was supposed to be a march with transgender with the transgender community carrying weapons around Washington D.C. If I'm correct, you're not allowed to have guns in Washington D.C., but they're allowed to, um, and even the current administration even encourages them to, you know, show that they're protected and show that they're safe. But to me, they look an awful lot like, uh, like either the Nazi brown shirts or just that cultural revolution thing, where where one side is allowed to do whatever. They're pretty much doing the work of the administration, whereas the other side is not even allowed to say words because words are considered harm. 
another another thing, and, and you are you 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 make a, a point here. Another thing that happened in Venezuela is that the media, um, we start seeing uh, censorship in the media, and, al and also the most dangerous one is when self censorship, when you don't want to say anything because gonna get you troubles. Self censorship, and you have politicians, uh, uh, weak politicians in Venezuela, where they don't, where don't, they don't, they don't say anything about that. And and we and, and when you have a society, auto censorship or, or self censorship themselves is danger because you, nobody can talk just them have a loud voice about everything. Yeah, I'm telling you, Chavez. In that moment, social media it wasn't there because that was 2000 before 2009, 2000 when social media exploded like I was big. Right. Um, and they and what they did is like they they start. Um, threading uh, journalists, famous journalists who made the who made point like right point like, oh this is thing, this is dumb, you are doing this, blah blah blah. They start calling the 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 new channel saying, hey, you have the journal? We're gonna we're gonna take away your 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 permission to 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 be on air because we are the government. And if you don't if you don't take care about this situation with the journalists, I want I want these people out of your channel. And and that's that and, and one, overnight you have one famous journalist with no job. When everybody see this, huh? wow, this guy is so famous and, and he got fired from the news. And everybody was like, nobody say anything about that. That's what I always wonder with uh what like I wonder this about from slavery. I wonder this about the Jew, the Jews. And, and anybody else, like, why was there not a revolt? Why did people not say, oh, you want my guns? Good luck. I don't understand how they just handed them over. We we, we try it. You cannot convince, persuade these individuals. And that's something I want to be clear. This political ideology is not a conventional politician. You cannot, you cannot talk to them. They don't want to listen to you. And if you try to do something different, they're gonna do whatever they want to do to 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 stop you. That's why they show up to 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 this to manifest and sabotage a, a really well organized event. And that's not the way that you do in the that that's not the way that you do things in democracy. You can you can you can argue with somebody, but with facts, you know, you you the debate, you 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 convince. No force everyone to stop uh, stop uh, a presentation because you you think that you are right. That's my point. That that happened in Venezuela. I can show you photos, videos about what they did. It it is same that what happening here. For example, Antifa, Antifa in 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 Washington and that area, they have blocks, and they they have an auto uh, self government. Something colored like that, something crazy like that. That happened in Venezuela, and, and, and we had that in Venezuela. The autonomous zones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you had these crazy people with with masks and, and weapons telling you the way that you need to live your life, or the way that you need to live in, uh, in your house. Did they capture the youth? Um, Here, they're capturing the youth. Here, through education, they're... Mm -hmm. They're capturing the youth. They're teaching the youth in school, look for the reasons why you're oppressed. So they're teaching resentment to our children. And one of the things I find really interesting is that you came here, you came here in 2009, um, but people coming here today are not coming with that same, let me work hard and find opportunity. They're coming here with the, give me what I, give me what I want. The kids, the kids, in, the kids in college, they're, they're coming in and they want free college and they want free housing. And they're the ones protesting. And I was talking to somebody from China and they said, well, yeah, because our kids are being taught out of the same book that we ran away from as in Marx, as in Karl Marx. So our, our children, including immigrants, are being taught 
that America is this oppressive place and they're not even having any kind of hindsight for what their parents came from. The the problem the problem uh, the problem with that and that's my opinion is uh, that's why these uh, political systems uh, what they want to they want to take is about family family values because you learn how to work you learn how to respect you learn how to how to do things because according to what your parents teach you you know uh, how you how your parents are um, that's why education and all this kind of uh, ed education never never can replace the mission of the family that's why but the best way to win this war because it's a it's a it's an ideological war is for politicians and people in in, in politics is in the grassroots is educating people is do you get an educated population people are going to start waking up and also uh straining straining the family the family values. For example, uh, I has been I has been visiting a lot of evangelical uh, churches everywhere. We need to uh, encourage people to visit their churches to 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 reinforce uh, their values, um, their belief. I respect a person who who really go to their to their services and and they they love what they do, and we need to reinforce that in America. Right now, right now, nobody want want to defend. Nobody know, but not too many people is is willing to defend who they are, and this is the most dangerous thing about this society or this this system, because they they want to to you to look like a crazy that you are the crazy right. that you you are intolerant. You are you know, um, they are doing exactly what they what they said. You know, it's crazy. That's why to educate the community. Is going to the grassroots, doing a lot of a lot of you say you you say that in English cottage, cotto, cottage uh, meeting, cottage meeting, mm -hmm. town hall meetings, uh, knock doors, but you don't see that in that in in this system. People, in, no. uh, some politicians are very. A lot uh, of them just rely on the fact that their family has always been politicians, and that their name name recognition will get them reelected. But I do find that there are a lot of people behind closed doors who agree because I have a similar mission to you in that in 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 the grassroots. my my goal is to um to protect as many kids as possible because our kids are being introduced into socialism as if it's something great. Um, and so when we talk to people individually and yeah, everybody, you know, likes to paint us as crazy and do whatever, but I'm like, I'm sorry. I, 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 I've learned so much that I didn't learn in school from having conversations like this, from speaking to people who have lived it. And so it's funny because I'll, the woke will use the term lived experience, but they're often experiences that they never had. So you will hear African Americans talking about slavery. And I'm I'm like, you weren't alive for slavery. You weren't even alive for the civil rights movement. But yet you say because of your lived experience, people have to respect you. I respect the people who've come here from other countries and look at America and cry because they have a hope that is so much better than the hell that they live through in their own countries. That's so, why that why you have Cubans coming cr crossing the the Caribbean Sea to Miami in the middle of a sea of sharks. Uh but they 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 want to give their life first then come back to Cuba. And that's that's the most that's the most powerful representation of what freedom means for us. Even for Venezuela, you you have Venezuelan crossing a jungle in 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 Central America, in Panama, uh, call it the Darien. The Darien, it's a it's a crazy jungle that they have, need to cross, uh, to to go to America walking, um, and if, if because freedom, if because they they prefer die in in, in doing it, they just stay in that kind of regimes when you don't have 
you are a zombie. You don't have any right. You don't have any any probability to succeed in your life. That's why a, that's why you have people who came uh, to America as a uh, as a refugee. We love this country and we are willing to do whatever we want to do to to preserve this country how it, what it is. You know. So what about when? When immigrants get over here, I know that as soon as Joe Biden was, became the president, they were wearing shirts that said Biden let us in. And there are people waiting to to basically bring them into the Democrat Party. But the values don't fit those of the people who would run here for freedom. So how are they? I mean, just just like me as a person of as, as a black person, even though I'm biracial, but as as a person of color, we're expected to be Democrats. How how did they not influence you? Because okay, Carlos, I'm talking about Carlos. I don't. I, the, I have another opinion about the Latino community. Okay, I'm about Carlos. Carlos is a lawyer from Venezuela. Carlos, uh, get educated. I'm, I'm, I graduated in political science and government here. And also I have another degree in Homeland Security and Emergency Management. And I, I read the news, I'm very for, I, I went to the party platform to see what, what fit in my life, what fit with my background, you know? And that's why I decided to become, to, to become part of the conservative movement in America. And that's why I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a voice uh, in the conservative movement as an immigrant, uh, also as a Latino, whatever you want to uh, to tell me. So how do we reach, this is what I've always seen. I've always seen that in the African-American community, the values, the common sense, that, is, that aligns with conservative values. The same thing with Hispanics, like hard work. You, there's no respect for laziness. Um, also faith, religion, these things should wake up the community. How do we go about waking up the community? Grassroots work. Let me let me let me let me give you an example. Uh, uh, I don't know if I can talk about about politics, politics like a partisan politics here. I don't know. If this is here. you can talk about anything. My okay. Pitch. Yeah. Okay, I just want to get me, the truth out. <laughs> I'm part. I'm part of the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I am a Latino liaison for the for the for the Republican Party. What I, what I do is like a, when I identify a family who are ready to vote in the Latino community, it's different to your community uh, because the Latino community more are immigrants and it's a mix of many things. But what I do is I, I went to their homes, I, went, I, I, I walk to their homes, knock the door, introduce myself, or somebody is friend of these, of these people, and I sit down with them and I explain them, hey, this is how this is what we believe. This is what happening. This is the history of this party, and this is the history of this party. And this is what the, the goals, the goals. Where do where do you belong? Uh, I I was talking to my banker. He he is from political. Uh, he's from Dominican Republic. A black guy like me, like Latino black guy, like, mm -hmm. something like that. And he told me like. Are you are you are you member of any political party here? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a Republican. And this guy told me like, Republican? What? What are you talking about? Like, yes, I'm a Republican. And I said he like, okay, let me give you let me let me ask you four questions, and you will see how Republican you are. I said okay, done. Let's let's start the the the, the question the quiz. Okay, do you believe in God? Yes, God is, is, is the center of my life. Of course, I'm Catholic, you know, like changing. Do you believe in socialism? I am a banker. I love business money. Changing two or four. Do you, um, the last question was, do you believe in abortion? And the guy was like, a, he was silent and, and two, two tears. In his eyes, like a, I was like, oh, oh, I touched. I said, oh, okay, I touched something that I, and he said, like, what happened? Why are you crying? And this guy told me like, my mother is a single mother, and when when I when she was pregnant for, uh, I, I am his only child, and when she was pregnant with me, 
and somebody offered her an uh, abortion. And she said no. And it because her faith, it because he, her love and care. Yeah. And that, in that moment, I stayed my hand and he said, welcome to the Republican Party. <laughs> Yeah. And he, he was he was disarmed. I was like, oh, I didn't know all this stuff. I didn't know all about this. And if you want to go deep, you can explain this individual from Latin America about Second Amendment. And you will be surprised that many Latinos support carry guns. Because I'm, they... I'm not surprised by that because when, when you have all of your rights taken away from you, you want to do what you can to protect yourself. Of course, and, and they, they, and also maybe, maybe, maybe they don't, but maybe their their parents or grandparents were fighting against something crazy. You know, when you talk about the second the second amendment, because they say like, wow, well, you know, you know, it's violence. Like, bro, we came from Latin America. Violence is everywhere. To be honest, you everywhere. And who carry the guns? Government and bad people. No, the no, the no, the no, the no, the families, no, the people. The history will be different if, the, if we carry guns in, in in Latin America. Our um, heroes, the the people who found our countries, they carry guns, but in the same time, uh, they they wasn't allowed to carry guns. That's the that's one thing. And the the second okay. the second thing is like a we need again we need to preach who we are, our identity, why we carry guns. Right. Uh, what about safety? Did people buy into this idea that your government will keep you safe? Yes. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's 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 pretty much uh when when that happened in Venezuela, good people say like, you know, we don't need these guns. Like this is and also from from the government speech, from the government rhetoric, always like that. guns are bad. You need to you need you don't need to have a gun to protect yourself. Like a, we, this is our job to pro, to protect the people. Um, and that rhetoric or that speech every day start affecting the people. The good people say the good people say like, okay, take the gun. Like I don't want to listen to you anymore. Um, um, because this kind of system, this kind of regimes repeat again against their ideas that's why they want to dominate uh mass communication they they dominate mass communication because that's what that's the way that they can became become uh they they want to transform false statement to true statement uh through the repetition in one moment you start believing the socialism is good wow and really in one moment of your life, you start thinking like, wow, I think I'm wrong. I think that socialism is, is true. Wow, because it's all, all day, every day, you start listening to the news and everywhere, the socialism is good. Okay, so now let's come to the future. We're 15 years, we're 15 years ahead. So today, what are these people who embrace socialism, what are they living in today? Is it is it good for them? Are the poor people better off than they were before? Um, was equity achieved? Or I mean, you already said that the middle class was basically destroyed. Everything, so... everything is destroyed. the the only The only rich people who are in the country in Venezuela right now is the government or the people who are related to the to the to the system to the regime. The right. the, the rest of the people, eight millions. Immigrants around the world. I, I want to. I want to tell you this story. Um, like I told you before, I'm LDS. Uh, I baptized when I was in Venezuela. When I was, when when I was 70 years old, I went to my mission. Uh, but when I was in that process to uh, knowing the church and, and the missionaries came to my home in Venezuela, uh, they start. They they show us an old movie from the from the LDS church called Legacy. Okay. In that in that old movie, we saw that was I'm telling you that was 1998 when Chavez was uh when Chavez was uh campaigning for president. And my mother 
uh, in that moment when she watched the movie, the movie is about the pioneer, how the pioneers were leaving, crossing the the United States to go to Utah, and they start, they they have to leave so many beautiful things in property and many good things that they have for generations uh, because they for freedom to to seek who they you know to to seek a a, a safe place to live. Part one part one part of the movie one scene is like a um, a old woman left one seat and she was crying because she wanted to bring this uh this seat uh, with her and my mother said something I remember that my mother said wow I can imagine I can imagine to leave she have another chair for generation I, I can imagine and she said she do this leaving this what what kind of thing could happen in any country to 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 leave your 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 property your things right. and and just 15 years later she need to leave her home and all his life for freedom and we became pioneers we never can underestimate these kind of evil regimes because they they want everything you tell me and uh, what what happening right now with China and America Fine they branches. are coming for us Yes. They are coming for us. They they are they own right now a Latin American. Yeah. And the, the next step is America. America, America is the is the is the is the hope of the humanity. Believe me, it's like Ronald Reagan said, if we lose freedom here, it's no other place to escape to. This is the last time we were. Yeah. So um what what hope do you have? Do you have hope? And especially what do we do to preserve our families um yesterday this is how much i'm not afraid of going into politics yesterday joe biden said that um a child there's no such thing as someone else's child children belong to the nation that's communist that's what i thought <laughs> chavez, chavez, chavez did say that and he has the most powerful parents movement in the history of Venezuela, that was the only fight that we won because he changed the constitution to give the the right to the to the state to control the the the, the, the child. For example, if, if the state wants to decide to 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 take your child, they have the 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 right to do it. Um, and he tried to do that in the constitution, and he 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 lose that fight. In, in that moment, in that moment. Right now, it, it, it's totally different. Right now, they're still fighting it 15 years later. They own everything. 15 years later, they own everything. They do whatever they want to do. They no, take the kids? Yes, they can do whatever they want. They We have kids who are uh, in the in the Colombian guerrilla. We have we have kids who are, who we, nobody talk about this, but in Venezuela, we have a human trafficking, horrible human trafficking. You have kids who are self selling kids for organs or for whatever, or, or sexual exploitation. The, this this individual don't have any any. They are like animals. They don't even know animals. They they don't believe in in moral values. They don't believe in principles. They don't believe in anything. They just believe in control. Let me let me let me give you another another quick story. Sure. I'm here to the United States. I'm an English, uh, English, uh, a second language person. You can you can see and you can hear my accent. I I am not afraid. I am not shy about this. This is who I am. This is what it is. I came here when I was 27 years old. Uh, I wasn't born here. The thing like a uh, with all these things, the identify or, or not identify like who I am. I am the first Latino an immigrant student body president in the state of Utah. And I was elected in Salt Lake Community College. And in that moment when I was elected, 87% of the, 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 the student population was white. And you are telling me that this is, all these people are racist? And you are telling me that my fellow friends, like, like students, are racist? In what other country in the world, people give the opportunity to a person like me, to lead them, really? 
I mean, I, I, I do say that I, I have experienced bigotry here in Utah, but it generally does not come from conservatives. Um, I've been, you know, I've been called the house N word and other names like that. Um, but it generally comes from people who feel like I need to bow or take a knee to the same causes that they do. So there, there is, there is bigotry. I think there's also like bigotry within, it's so funny because they say white people, white people, white people, but within like the Latino community, there are people who don't like each other that everybody else would sum up and say they're all Latino, right? But there's a difference between Venezuelan and Guadalupe and, 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 and Mexican. Or oh, yes. Where they don't, they don't always like each other. <laughs> So it's crazy to me that we're that this is a huge thing, and it really doesn't matter, in my opinion. I don't really care who doesn't like me, you know. I, sometimes they put a roadblock in between what I'm trying to do. I have two options when I when I was uh, uh when I was uh uh when I can hear because that was in the middle of my crisis. You you have two options. Play the play the the big thing role or be successful and my dad my dad told me if you want to play you want to cry you want you don't want to fix anything about that you don't want to you don't want to fix your problem playing the big thing role but you are in the most powerful country in the world that you can dictate your destiny that's what my father said and if you, if you want to succeed you need to go out and work because no, that's how we we are. This is how you become like a real man, a real woman. When you start succeeding and you become independent of anyone, working hard, doing your 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 thing. Uh, uh, because in that kind of regime, nobody nobody own nothing. And the only th oh, I forget. You make a question just few, two minutes ago. What we go? What we need to do with the politician who don't who are. You said that in English, flip flop. So, yeah, or just like stick their head in the sand and tell everybody, "Don't worry." Yes, and like another person, when you when you have a politician who who is afraid, or or when you have a politician who want to play the do double double game, you know the double play, that don't gonna work. They 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 are who they are. My my father is a politician, like I told you, and he used to tell me, Carlos, you always need to be the person that you are like a i don't know if that's have any any sense in, in english but yes you have to stand up you have to have principles you are who you are mm -hmm. and if, even when the majority of the people the people don't believe you in the moment you are who you are and people are going to respect you even even your enemy is going to respect you more because who you are is not because oh the the wing is in the in the right okay i'm going to do to the right oh oh no it's going left let's go to the left that politician mm -hmm. are the danger. That politician are the, the main thing to destroy the country. Yes. Because that the, that's the real enemy, because you never know who they are. And you never know the, how they how they're gonna react. That and we need to we need to get out of this politician because we never know who they are. We call we call this individual. Do you, have you seen the TV show, 80s TV show called Manimal? No. <laughs> Manimal is a man. Who who depends what happening? He became an animal, like a different animal, like eagle, like a puma or whatever. <laughs> okay. And, and you see this kind of animal in the political arena, who they become? Oh, I I need to become more democratic, and they start transforming themselves in, in democrats. Oh no no no! It's more Republican. Boom boom! They become red. Like a, these individuals are, are very dangerous because you never know who they are. You never know how how corrupt they are. You know this. Yes, exactly. There's this very, um, there's this old country song that says you have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything, and I feel like that perfectly embodies the conservative that that we that we stand for something, even if it's just simple things like you. If I give you my word, you know you can trust it. If I say I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here. Um. What we have right now are people who have no no real principles, and we're dealing with half of us are coming from a Christian worldview, a Judeo-Christian worldview, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. 
and half of us are coming from a postmodern worldview, which the principles are, I can absolutely lie to you. I, I, I can pretend to be exactly what you want me to be. And then the second that you elect me, I'm going to show my true colors. I mean, you really have to do your research in order to know what you're getting. What yeah. I want to tell you about this is like, in the beginning, it's your start with the most, um, with some people. But in the end, even these individuals who think that they are smart, smartest than anyone, having this behavior, oh, I'm going to vote for this, even it's a, it's a progressive policy because everybody's voting because, oh, I don't know, they give money for them, or I don't know. Right. Oh, I'm going to do this right now because this is beneficial for me. One day, the history gonna 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 give them uh, something really bad because what what I'm telling you this and you are maybe you are asking why Carlos is talking like this why Carlos is no more do you think that I can be politically correct when I see the destruction of Venezuela in less than twenty years and I I see the same patterns right now in the United States what gonna happen with my with, with the future of my three sons Carlos Isaiah Carlos Rodrigo Carlos Luciano twelve five and three. What's going to happen with them? What kind of country are living uh, are living to them? Yes. They're gonna live the same thing that I'm living right now. I prefer five right now for them that that them have to leave to other what other place they they they, they need to leave. Yes. Absolutely. I I could not agree more. Um if you were to walk into a high school and to tell kids if you had two minutes to tell them the most important things that they need to know today, what would you say? America is not a dream. America is a miracle. And I I, I, I live in that, this miracle because I'm a political asylee and this country gives me a second a, a, a second life, a second oppor a, a, another opportunity to reveal my life, to be, uh, to pursue the happiness. Beautiful. Okay, one, one, one more thing. What exactly do you see happening in America that is exactly what you saw in Venezuela? The it's a war, ideological war, war right now. And what I see right now is like they they are ahead um, because we don't have people, we don't have uh, the politicians who are right now in in power, like uh, in holding position of power. They are not doing everything that they need to do to stop this craziness, and they don't want to stand up for 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 the truth. Um, and that's the most dangerous thing, like uh, because everything is a uh, everything right now, everything in life is leadership. Uh, the companies, uh, political organizations, uh, file, uh, foundations, or what, or any any kind of organization that you are, uh, churches is leadership. If the leaders are no uh, brave, if the leader don't have a, a mission, a, ambition, or, or, or if the leaders are no doing the right thing, everything gonna go, everything gonna going to fall, uh, and that's what happening right now in America. That's that's what I see right now. We this is right now we are we are in in Venezuela in two thousand one, two thousand two, according to what I, what I live. Uh, everybody, everybody is, is the economy is is fine right now. You 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 see wealthy, you are good, but you are feeling some stuff changing. And also, in the in the in the ideological, the, 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 people can identify the ideological war. If we don't have preachers in the in in our side, brave people to preach the truth, we're gonna lose. Mm. Okay. Um, all right. Are you going to run for office? 2024. That's my plan. And if anybody wants to support you, follow you, what can they do? Uh, contact contact me in my social media, Carlos Alejandro Moreno in, in Facebook. In, in Instagram is C Moreno D. Uh, I'm planning to run for uh, for uh, for a position in Salt Lake County uh, Council. I would like to run for this for this position. Uh, I have some plans to work for the, with the youth. I have some plans to work with the business owners. 
the small business owners. And that's, that's what I want to do for 2024. And you run an organization, correct? Yes. I'm president of the new leader for America. It's a 501c3. Uh, what we do is educate the community, especially the minority community, especially the Latino community about America, about the constitution, about, and also uh, our mission is, uh, uh, is inspire, educate, and organize the community to to be uh, to be uh, civically engaged. That's the that's the mission of the organization. Thank you, Carlos. I really do believe that if if America is going to be saved, it's going to be saved by people like you. It's going to be saved by immigrants who know what it is that they're fighting for, rather than um, complacent Americans who just don't think anything bad could ever happen here. Excellent. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You're welcome. Okay, bye-bye.